you know, be powerful while in relationship with others. Um, you know, we can go in depth into becoming a musician and learning all these different techniques. And, you know, for some people that may be their path, but for others, you know, there's nothing, you know, foreign about the concepts of music. It's, you know, you make eye contact and then you establish rules like you would in any other game. And then, um, you, um, uh, have a conversation. Um, but music allows us to fully integrate our right and our left brains as we're doing that. Whereas if we might have a conversation with someone with just words, you know, we may not be able to really have a full body conversation with them and may not be able to connect on a really deep level. But if you play music with someone, you know, anyone will say this, uh, they feel like they really, you know, had to, if they either learned something about themselves or they had to face something in themselves that might have come up, some insecurity, some fear, um, because there's something about creating with someone else that um, really puts us out there and puts us out of our comfort zone. Yeah. So the, what I want to do with these sessions is, is to use the Moya drums and, um, you know, you do maybe do some meditation to maybe like kind of like set the space and set the tone um, and then do some playing together, just very simple um, in, in a rhythm or maybe even not in a rhythm. It could be just exploratory um, and, um, and to also mix it with, you know, talking to them about their life, like maybe having some prompting questions before, you know, like with meditation, like meditate on this and maybe talk about it afterwards. Um, so using words timely to kind of like prompt them to draw things out. And then also, um, I've been using um, the I Ching for a while um, for uh, my own self and and for others. You know, I've, I've gotten feedback from a lot of people that you know I'm, I'm it's something that I should be sharing with other people. So you know, kind of want to mix that around um, into it. So it's kind of like this. Um, yeah, like it's about tuning in and then you know setting the tone for for the rest of your life. Is there a specific, like, you speak of a music, musical language and uh -huh. culture, but is there a specific, a specific genre perhaps, uh, of music that you, that you apply or is it very broad? Is it very world? Um, what can you say about that? Hmm. Well, I guess it might depend on the client. Like if it's, if it's someone that has no musical experience, then it would, I would, we would just be using the Moya drums and then that would, I guess you could call kind of world music or meditative music. Experimental. Uh, yeah, exactly. Experimental. Um, and then if it's someone that does play music, then maybe, you know, we would, if it, you know, there's some background that they had, we could mix that into it so that we could play from there. Okay in their place, or maybe they could even, you know, say someone that's been playing guitar for a while, they could bring their guitar right. and we could do it together with the guitar because that's the way that they've been, you know, working on accessing themselves is through the guitar. One, one question that I would ask is, okay, so here I am, I like to play a bit of blues, a bit of maybe rock um, on, on the guitar and so here I show up and I'm gonna do some musical sound healing type thing and initially I I sort of try to follow that that groove but eventually I'm gonna start playing and picking the blues and the whole that the whole that sort of thing like that like is how would you describe that is that a is that a, a bad thing or I mean, not that there is good or bad but yeah, yeah, yeah. how is the healing element is it different or is it the same is it does it build upon it or how is it different yeah because I, I could go to a, you know hook up with some friends do a jam session i feel really yeah. good about what we just did and you know like all oh, like yeah. five and have a beer and you know yeah <laughs> um what well, you know it, that would be awesome if they if if they if they shifted into something i guess it's i would say my job is to 
is to encourage them to 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 you know play what's the, in their heart. So if that's what's coming out, then I'm very good at. I've been told this. I've been very good at following other people and playing either playing music to support people speaking or playing music to support people doing meditation or playing music to support people and doing whatever they're doing. Yeah. I just kind of like. I don't know. I, I kind of zone out, but I also just really play from an intuitive place. Okay. But I can also I also do it, you know, following people. That's what I do with the cello, with all different sorts of genres. Mm. You know, just things supportive lines will come to me mm. because the cello is an instrument that, you know, I grew up playing the bass line. I grew up playing the solo melody, playing the counter melody. The cello plays everything. So. Um, that's sort of my role is to be able to, to play wherever I need to play in order for the harmony to come out. So yeah. my goal is, is for the harmony to, to come out. And that's where, you know, it becomes important for me to do my own work to make sure that, that, that I'm able to do that in whatever situation is there with whatever person is there that okay. I'm able to tune into them. And even though I may be sharing some tools or I may be sharing this or that, you know, it's more about their experience. Okay. Okay. So also one question that comes to my mind and also looking at some of the imagery that you've shared is that, and, and mentioning yoga. So are you coming from a yoga sort of background where there's quite a bit of um, sort of Vedic Sanskrit kind of context and even the mantras as far as I, I'm familiar with? They're mostly in Sanskrit. Are you also using Sanskrit mantras, chanting, bringing it to that specific sort of, um, maybe not denomination, but in a sense, it, it draws it towards a certain, a certain path? Or are you still very open to using maybe English, you know, affirmations and mantras, or how would you describe that? Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm still contemplating that. Um, but I'd say, you know, from the scientific standpoint, Sanskrit is, you know, the most powerful language that there is. I mean, Sanskrit, um, has the potency to, you know, actually create its own image when you intone like the, the vowels of Sanskrit, um, say like just sands that's on a metal plate like you know how this is the study of cymatics how you how you how sounds creates form mm. uh, sanskrit vowels will create the characters mm. create their own characters are you you are familiar with this science yeah and this is yeah and this yeah. is a science that you know i you know i studied as an anthropo through anthropology yeah. but it's something that I would like to, to do more of and that that's sort of the direction that I want to be taking my composition that I want to be going in with. You know, when I think of music education for kids, I mean, yeah, there's, and for, and for adults and just music education in general, I mean, there's a lot to be said for, you know, the way that it's done now. And yes, I'm of course open to doing English affirmations and to melding and meeting our culture where it is. Yeah. But I see so much more that can be done with it. Yeah. You know, when you really start engaging, you know, a scientific approach to it and using the things that are the most powerful. But that's also, it's, you know, it can definitely be that someone, it will be more, they'll have a more meaningful experience if, if, it, if they're doing it in a certain way, like if, if they're using English affirmations or if they're, you know, using English words rather than, you know, Sanskrit mantras. Um, so I guess in, in that I'm, I'm taking a, you know, more, yeah, a little bit more open approach, but I definitely am thinking about, you know, where I want to be coming from because I want to be speaking for my truth. I don't want to just be always going to where they are. You know, I want to be coming from a certain place. Um, and you know, the place that I'm, that I'm, that I'm really coming from is, is, you know, bhakti yoga, aspiring to do that and aspiring to, you know, to, um, to just, you know, do it from the heart. 
yeah. and to and to and to follow and to follow trust her to follow all these things to follow the rules and regulations of course because that's where I am yeah. we have to follow rules and rules and regulations so that we can actually be doing something that's a benefit to us and then as we do things that are benefit then it starts to change our consciousness and then once we start to change our consciousness we may get to a new a newer you know a more advanced platform where we're able to do things more authentically and spontaneously. Um, so, you know, I'm meditating on that too in, in, you know, how much of that I want to right. put into the practice. I get, again, again, I guess, uh, depending very much on who you're working with at the, at the exactly, moment. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's very awesome. So, uh, well, that's, that's very nice. I'm very happy with this, uh, with this bit here that I got from huh? you. Uh, with regards to the empowered play, with regards to sort of the the mix of your various uh, interests and and talents, huh? and you know music as a as a medium, as a as a lifestyle, um, a, you know lifestyle of authenticity. I think that sounds very beautiful, actually. Yes. Um, yeah, sounds very good. I, by the way, I mean, cause so this this was good.